Welcome back to Trek's Own Plays. Matt Miller with you in Studio 4. I'm continuing my playthrough of Star Trek Judgment Rights. It's the follow-up to the 1992 classic, the 25th anniversary. Kirk, Spock, McCoy, they're all here. They're all giving dialogue, uh, as well as everyone else, of course. Can't forget Scotty and Uhura, Chekhov and Sulu as well. Our entire main cast is with us uh, for Star Trek Judgment Rights. This is the uh, fifth instalment uh, in my playthrough. Let's dive straight into it. Retro games with no commentary. This is Trek Zone Plays. <laughs> Spock, where do you think we should start looking for this? Brassica? Logic suggests that they will present us with opportunities to come to them. Captain, a message from Starfleet. On screen. Captain, the USS Regulus has been forced to cancel its survey mission to the Antares Rift. We've decided to redirect the Enterprise to that mission. The USS Hood will take over for your current assignment. Of course, the Antares Rift has a rather dangerous reputation. Nothing the Enterprise can't handle. But be careful. Starfleet out. Captain's log, Stardate 6257.6. We have entered the Antares Rift and found spatial disruptions in the Rift that make using warp engines extremely dangerous. Repairs are almost complete on the minor damage we suffered upon entry into the Rift. We are continuing our survey using impulse engines. My poor babies. Warp engines were meant to be used, Captain. Communications are back online, Captain. Deflectors at 93% power and increasing. Captain, undoubtedly that phenomenon would explain many of the strange disappearances in this sector. Still, with our warp engines deactivated, our computers indicate we will be safe. Communications are out again, Captain. Is anyone hurt? If he was human, Mr. Spock's pride might be... Captain, sensors failed to indicate anything unusual prior to the explosion. I would speculate that it was caused by an extremely unusual rift in the space-time continuum. A place where radically different physical laws apply. And since it was different space-time, our sensors weren't programmed to detect it. And it could happen again at any time without warning. Any ideas, Lieutenant? I was barely able to reroute the necessary connections last time, Captain. Communications are completely useless now. We may be able to enter codes into the library computer and instruct others to send messages to us. Captain, I believe I may be able to adjust the sensors to detect these spatial rifts and pilot the Enterprise to avoid them. However, the sensors are too heavily damaged here. I will need to get to auxiliary control as soon as possible if I am to reroute the necessary systems. Mr. Spock, the bulkheads were breached just outside of the bridge. No one's going to be able to leave the bridge for at least an hour unless they're transported out. Status, Mr. Chekhov. Captain, navigation is not responding. The circuits are as lightless as a Stalinist. Status, Mr. Sula. Helm is not responding, Captain. The controls are completely dead. Scotty, what's our status? Very bad, Captain. Whatever hit the Enterprise hit us right in our own neighborhood. The hull is breached six meters from the bridge. Beyond that, the instruments are useless. I can't read or send anything through these controls. We'll need a starbase to make this bridge functional again. Scotty, how about auxiliary control? Captain, I cannot determine the status of anything beyond the place where the rupture occurred. The rest of the ship could be dead as far as we know. Ideas, Mr. Walker? I'm a security guard, sir, not an idea man. Still, if we could send out probes to detect these rifts, we might get a better idea on whether they're moving or not, and whether we should stop and make repairs or keep moving. It's stuck. We're not getting out of here that way.
Captain, the library computer is online. Apparently, its circuits were shielded from the explosion. Captain, I have managed to program a message into the library computer. The first time a person accesses the computer, they will read our distress signal. Hopefully, they can code a reply into the computer, which we can access. Captain, the transporters are operational. I request permission to be transported, so I can begin the adjustments to sensors as soon as possible. Go ahead, Spock. No, Spock, I'll go first. Go ahead, Spock. Spock! I'm patching your log into the computer. You should have voice messages. Captain, we've managed to jury rig an evacuation tube through the bridge turbo lift. We should be able to keep it stable long enough for you to be evacuated. Captain's log. After equipping ourselves with tricorders and phasers, we are now searching for a way to find Spock and return him to us. I've determined that the best place to start How bad is it, Scotty? That explosion was 42% stronger than the one that struck near the bridge. Our left warp nacelle is crippled, Captain. I hope it's not a trend. Keep me posted, Mr. Scott. Kirk out. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Kirk to Uhura. Come in, Lieutenant. Kirk to Sick Bay. Bones, where are you? Computer. Kirk to Scott. Come in, Scotty. Captain, I got bad news for you. This rift is affecting the hull of the ship. Our hull integrity is dropping fast. How bad is it, Scotty? It's at 92% and dropping rapidly. According to our system specs, if it drops below 63%... Put as much power as you can to the shields. Use them to support our hull integrity. Divert as much power as you can to the sensors. Let's find out what's causing this. Evacuate all people from the outer decks. Divert power from life support on those decks evenly to shields and sensors. Put as much powers as you can to the shields. Use them to support our hull integrity. Divert as much power as you can to the sensors. There's no guarantee we'll find anything, Captain. That's a risk I'm prepared to take, Kirk out. Our highest priority is control of the sensors. We must find Spock. I'll handle it, Captain. Remember, I was a physicist when I first joined the Enterprise. Ah, Captain, look! Captain, what happened? It appears our alien friend likes its privacy. The Cossacks have locked the door, Captain. I'm getting a sensor reading on the alien. I'm sure Dr. McCoy will find this data very interesting.
Well, Jim, I leave you alone for five minutes and look at the mess you've made. Jim, what is going on out there? Spock is gone, Bones. He was transporting off the bridge, and then he vanished, and then this alien appeared in auxiliary control. An alien kidnapped Spock? Why? I don't know. We managed to get a medical scan. Jim, this says our invaders are Vorians. Vorians? But they're extinct. They died out at the time that Cochrane invented the warp drive. They were slaughtered in the Three Systems War. Jim, I know my history, but I also know my anatomy. The alien in auxiliary control is a Vorian. There's only one strange thing. What's that? This creature isn't capable of doing some of the things that you described. It's an ordinary Vorian. No special organs, no unusual brain patterns, nothing that traditionally suggests superhuman feats. Can you neutralize it, Bones? Actually, it's a female. And yes, I know of something that can incapacitate it without harming it, a gas mixture. You'll have to pump large quantities into auxiliary control for it to be effective, but it should work almost immediately. Here's the gas, Jim. Be careful with it. There hasn't been a Vorian in 150 years. Captain, there has been an explosion near the shuttle bay. I'm fine. There has been no significant damage. Any luck communicating with Starfleet Command? I have made contact with the light cruiser USS Jefferson, sir. It will reach the edge of Antares Rift in 16 hours. The Rift is playing havoc with communications. Thank you, Lieutenant Kirkout. Is it too late to put in a request for an early retirement? Scotty, if we hit any more of these random detonations, it'll be mandatory retirement for all of us. Actually, Captain, I was hoping for a better pension. Life support control systems. This monitors and controls the ship's life support. Deflector control grid. This system prevents the Enterprise from being pulverized at near light speed by micrometeorites. That's a good idea. Let the gas blow through the hull bridge into the vacuum of space. Not in there, Captain. Put the gas in the life support pump, then use the controls. Dr. McCoy had given me the specs on that gas injection system. It looks like a rather clumsy fit. I'll do it, Scotty. You'd think that Dr. McCoy would have some respect for engineering. Let's see how our alien friend likes Dr. McCoy's medicine. Probably as much as we do, Hikaru. Mr. Kyle, can you transport me to auxiliary control? Aye, sir. But I have to remind you how dangerous intership transporting can be. We've really been pushing our luck today. I'm aware of that, Mr. Kyle, but we have to take the risk. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. These readings look normal to me. 
This looks like a normal course, right, Pavel? Normal? It's an excellent course. The same one I entered before the alien came on board the ship. Nothing to report, Captain. Everything seems... Uh-oh. You better take a look yourself, Captain. Everything seems to be working except for internal sensors. Captain, we can't affect the dilithium monitor. It's only a readout of the lattice efficiency and stability. That's odd. All systems look normal. The aliens haven't touched navigation. What's going on? Everything seems to be working. Library, computer, external sensors. Mr. Sulu, see if you can find where the Vurian went. Maybe that will lead us to Spock. Captain, I'm detecting the Vurian. She seems to have vanished through a rift in space. I have the coordinates of her last known location. You have the coordinates where the alien teleported? Captain, you're asking me to transport you into another dimension. I may not be able to lock on to you there. I'm aware of the risk, Mr. Kyle. You have your orders. Aye, sir. Energize. Captain's personal log. Transported to many strange places in my day, but beaming into an alien dimension is something entirely unique. Only the extreme risk to my ship and my friend Spock would cause me to take such a drastic risk. This doesn't look like a nice place to visit. There's the Vurian. I don't see Spock. He's got to be around here somewhere. Strange boulders jut from the depths of this strange planetscape. Strange boulders jut from the depths of this strange planetscape. They seem more organic than mineral. inhabitants of this dimension don't mind visitors. Let's find Spock and get out of here quickly. You aren't scared, are you? Not at all. The Russians are just an efficient and very sensible people. Greetings, Lord Kirk. I am Imanata. I regret the discomfort that I put you through on your ship. I wish only to preserve my joy by serving the Savant. Are you willing to help me, Imanata? Where is Spock? How did you come to be here? What were you doing on my ship? Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the Savant. It may help. Actually, I was thinking more about freeing Spock. What is the Savant? I would appreciate the Savant being informed. Actually, I was thinking what I would appreciate the Savant. It is done. The Savant awaits. Captain, this stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It also has a wave signature indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. I wish you and 
and all entities nothing but joy. Who are you? Why do you ensnare others against their will? Release Spark at once and allow us to return to our ship. Who are you? Once, eons ago, I was akin to you. A creature of flesh and pain. But I released myself from these bonds and became an entity of pure emotion. And I came to this place to find a shelter from the cares of the universe. A pouch from the Vorian Life Support Capsule. Savant acts as an amplifier. The more minds in union with him, the greater the level of emotion. And happiness is a powerful emotion. Spock, you want this? Happiness is a human desire, Captain. I am a Vulcan. I want to be free of emotions. This is the antithesis of my desires. Spock! Try to tell you what I know. The emotions make it difficult to communicate. The creature that has done this is called the Savant. A being of great power that has transformed itself into a creature of living emotion. It can form a link with any creature with psionic abilities, including Vulcans. <sighs> it taps into latent emotions and amplifies them, using them to increase its emotional s stability. What happens if it gets cut off from you on the Vurian? It would be alone, but could cope. We enhance its enjoyment, but we are not essential to its survival. We are like a, a backup system. It relies on us for emotional support, but, but it, it could exist without us. Captain, I recommend you negotiate with Sabat to escape this place. I am expendable. Expendable? Spock, I see that these emotions have given you a sense of humor. If we can find a weakness, we might be able to take you with us. What can you tell us, Spock? Spock, can you negotiate with the Savant on our behalf? Spock, we found some very strange stones. What are they? This entire pocket dimension is organic and psionic. In order to maintain the Savant's life force, negative emotions that are suppressed might be absorbed in mineral-like pockets beneath the surface of this dimension. Captain, I recommend you negotiate with Sabat to escape this place. I am expendable. Expendable? If we can find a weak spot, can you negotiate with- It refuses to deal with issues of logic and free will. It is not a violent creature, but is extremely fixated on its goals and believes what it does is morally justified. Captain. Expendable? Spock, I see that these emotions... If we can find a... Spock, can you negotiate with Spock? We found... Expe if we can find a weakness... With its reliance on emotion is its main weakness. It is a creature of intense needs. And <laughs> despite having millions of years of joy, it still retains a, a subconscious fear of losing its joy, of experiencing negative emotions. Captain. 
expendable? Spock, I see that these... <laughs> As usual, your illogic is beyond comprehension, Captain. If I were human, I might find it delightful. I understand, Mr. Chekhov. It is quite logical. registers as alive, Captain. Almost like some colony life form. It registers a psionic signature. The stones are organic, Captain. My tricorder detects intense psionic energy from them. I'll get them, Captain. Put them in the pouch we found. Oh, am I getting an odd feeling from these stones? Vibrations? Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality check. Is that sadness you're feeling so about? It couldn't be that those inferior humans have outwitted your great wisdom, could it? What's the matter, Savant? Life isn't all happiness and joy. No. I have spent millions of years trying to escape the anguish. Misery is the destroyer of worthy souls, Captain. And you are destroying me. I am not destroying you. Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. Free Spock and return us to our ship and this will end. I didn't want to do this, but if I have to destroy you to free my friend, I will. I am not destroying you. Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. Am I really such a monster that I deserve such pain? You have lost respect for others, Savant. Everyone may have different goals, different ideals than you, and you have the right to pursue them. You need to respect their free will, even if it makes them miserable. You do not understand me, Captain, but I am in no mood to argue. You and your scientist may be freed. Enjoy your universe, Captain Kirk. Captain's Log, we are out of the Antares Rift and are on our way to Starbase 8, where the Enterprise has extensive repairs scheduled. All crew members, including First Officer Spock, are safely aboard. So, Spock, you mean you had an eternity of pure enjoyment and you gave it up? From it, it That has to be the most illogical thing I've ever heard. Humans spend their entire lifetime dreaming of an eternity of pleasure. As do animals in the field. Perhaps humans are meant to be better than that. Perhaps we should dream of greatness and not simple gratification. Greatness is a term subject to individual interpretation, Captain. The savant viewed the pursuit of greatness as useless because all great deeds and accomplishments are destined to be forgotten in cosmic terms. A cosmic being thinks in cosmic terms, Spock. But somehow that philosophy overlooks a lot of life's little pleasures. There's just one thing that bothers me about the whole thing. Really, Doctor? Spock finally got to enjoy himself, and I wasn't there to see it. Now that's something worth remembering. 
Message from Starfleet Command. On screen. I reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed with the results of your recent performance. Outstanding work, Jim. Keep up the good work. Kano. 